Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Jimmy. I'm glad you called, but we'll have to try another time, Angel. Uh Uh-huh, tonight I'm involved with a case in which a gun has one bullet too many in it, and a man has the same trouble. This is Jack Costello, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The case of the superfluous murder. Friends, in just a moment or two, we'll join the Falcon for his latest adventure. But first, let me tell you about nine ways you can save time in the kitchen. Just discover the nine handy Kraft cheese spreads and enjoy snacks and sandwiches, salad toppings and appetizers that are really easy and quick to fix. There are sharp-tasting Kraft cheese spreads and mild-tasting ones, too. You can depend on them all to be delicious. And, of course, you can depend on them to be the finest quality because they're made by Kraft. Try some of these handy helpers tomorrow. Take home several of the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads. Now, the case of the superfluous murder. It's Sunday night in New York when pudgy Wesley Endicott opens the door to his apartment and reaches for the light switch, but stops when he hears a noise in the darkened living room. For a second, Endicott pauses, then clicks the switch to see Dennis Fulton jumping back from the sofa on which Endicott's startled wife, Gail, is sitting. Wesley, I I didn't expect you so early. Yes, that's pretty obvious. I know how it looks, Endicott, but uh, don't get the wrong idea. No, Dennis. What idea do you expect me to get? We uh, were just talking. In the dark? What can I say? You don't have to say anything. I should have known the way Gail's been acting lately. Gail, Gail, how could you do this to me? You really want to know? Yes. Then look in the mirror. Take a good look. You're not going to get away with this, either of no. you. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to kill that cheap double cross. No, Wesley, don't. Get out of my way. Oh. And now, Dennis, here's yours. Oh. 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 <laughs> if you're going to fight for the honor oh. of your home, Endicott, Uh-oh. you'd better start taking boxing lessons. <laughs> Sir, uh, what can I do for you? I want to see Endicott. Who shall I say is calling? You don't need to say anybody's calling. I'll announce myself. But you can't. I said I can. Out of the way, Junior. Just a moment now. Mr. Endicott won't like that. Hello, Endicott. Oh, Mr. Nail. I tried to stop him, Mr. Endicott, and he wouldn't tell me what he wanted. It's it's all right, Shepard. It's all right. I know him. Oh, uh, well, you said you didn't want to be disturbed, and I didn't know. He wouldn't give his name. All right, Shepard. Get back to your desk. Yes, sir. And shut the door. Yes, sir. And now, Mr. Mayo, what's the idea of upsetting Shepard like that? You could have let him announce you. You mean I could have let him tell me you weren't in? I didn't feel like a runaround. I don't understand. You don't understand. I see somebody close one of your eyes for you. Would you like me to make it unanimous? As a matter of fact, I don't much care. 
I learned last night that my wife... There's another man. Nothing much matters anymore. Well, your personal life is one thing. This is business, and it matters. Especially this check of yours. What? What about it? You tell me, Andy Carter. Well, uh, is something wrong with it? Wrong with it? Of course not. It's perfect. Absolutely finest quality, genuine A number one rubber. Oh, no. That's impossible. Well, you argue with the First National Bank. Well, there must be some mistake. The mistake is you thinking I'm going to sit still for this. It's a stall, Endicott. You didn't have cash to cover, and you knew it. You figure to put me off till you can swing a deal. No, no, Mr. Mayo. You're wrong. Believe me. Believe you. That's rich. Oh, no, Endicott. You're scaring up the cash, and you're scaring it up fast. You've got until tomorrow noon. But if you don't... Only... Tomorrow noon. If you don't come across with payment by then, I turn this check over to the D.A. for collection. Well, I, I'll do what I can, but it's all a mistake. Well, you better correct it before it turns out to be a fatal one. I'll be seeing you, Wendy. I know. Tomorrow noon. <laughs> you the detective known as the Falcon? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Well, this is Wesley Endicott. I'm sorry to call you at home, Mr. Waring, but I couldn't find your office listed. Well, maybe that's because I don't have one. Oh, you work out of your home? Mm-hmm. Well, isn't that rather inconvenient? <laughs> is it causing you any trouble? Well, no. Well, then? Well, I, I didn't call to talk about you, Mr. Waring. All right, change the subject. Can you come over here right away? Where is here? My apartment, Sheldon Hall. What's it about? I I'll tell you when I see you. Well, there'll be a charge for the visit. It doesn't matter. How soon can you get here? Yes? Mrs. Endicott? Yes. I'm Michael Waring. Is that supposed to mean something to me? If you listen to the radio. I must hear the wrong programs. <laughs> what do you want? Well, didn't your husband tell you? Oh, he and I aren't speaking. Oh, well, he and I are. That's what he asked me over for. Where is he? He's in the study. Last door on the right end of the hall. Thank you, Angel. You might tell him for me to quit sulking. I'm leaving as soon as I finish packing. I'll give him your message. Walk in. He won't answer. He thinks it's me. Thanks. Hello, Endicott. Hey. Mrs. Endicott. What is it? You don't need to leave him. Looks like he's left you permanently. What are you talking about? Well, he's not sulking. He's dead. Dead? Mm hmm. And if this is his handwriting, it looks like he did it himself. <laughs> Sergeant Corbett. Well, this is indeed a coincidence. Sit down and join me in a knockwash. Coincidence. I've been looking for you, Waring, as if you didn't know. Uh, as if I didn't. You reported the Endicott body. Mm, so I did. Why didn't you hang around till I got there? Well, Corbett, I didn't know you cared. I've got questions. Well, it's all in the note. He says he was betrayed, so he killed himself. But who betrayed him? Oh, I wouldn't know. The note says he hired you to get proof for him. Uh -huh. It also says he changed his mind after calling me. He had all the proof he needed for his own satisfaction. That's why he decided to kill him. I still want to know who betrayed him. Now, don't tell me you're the inquisitive type, Corbett. It's my job. Uh -huh. Homicide's your job. This is suicide. Is it? Unless that note wasn't in Endicott's handwriting. I showed it to three experts. Mm -hmm. What did they say? All agreed. It's definitely Endicott's pen pushing. Well, then what more do you want? He's found with a gun in his hand. That's right, Waring. And a suicide note in his own handwriting. That's right, Waring. So, Corbett, uh, how come you're still asking questions? Because I don't happen to have the answer to this one. Who killed him? Well, Corbett, you just... I sa said he wrote the note. I said he had a gun in his hand. But Waring, the gun in his hand was never fired. <laughs> This is Jack Costello again, friends. All of you in favor of having good, hot biscuits for dinner, say aye. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Just about everyone likes them. So here's a trick you should know. 
For extra delicious hot biscuits, spread them with delicious Old English brand cheese spread, one of the nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads, just before they're ready to come out of the oven. Then slip the biscuits back in the oven and let the wonderful flavor of this tempting cheese spread melt right into them. Mmm, you'll have some of the best-tasting biscuits you ever enjoyed because Old English brand cheese spread is so good. It's made of fine, sharp, aged American cheddar cheese for really wonderful eating. And it's smooth, creamy smooth for easy spreading. And, of course, like all nine Kraft cheese spreads, Old English brand is a wholesome dairy food made from only the finest, purest ingredients. Try it for grand snacks and sandwiches, too. And try Smokel and Roca and all the nine Kraft cheese spreads. Look for them in colorful, gay, tulip-patterned drinking glasses. Collect a whole set while you enjoy the delicious Kraft cheese spreads. You know, the Kraft cheese spreads are so delicious, they're America's favorites. So be sure you get the cheese spreads made by Kraft. <laughs> Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's a few minutes since Mike Waring learned that Endicott's suicide was not a suicide. Or was it? That's what the Falcon and Sergeant Corbett are wondering as they drive in a police car back to Endicott's. So his wife was planning to leave him, Waring. So she said. Why didn't you tell me about it before I mentioned the gun? Well, I didn't think it mattered before, Corbett. Sometimes you don't think too much for your own good. So I'll begin thinking. Uh, tell me, does Mrs. E know her husband didn't kill himself? Not unless she did it. I left her thinking it was suicide. Good boy. That puts us a step up on her. Yeah, and we may need it. The note says he was betrayed. Her leaving him could be the betrayal. Mm-hmm. Except if he didn't kill himself, does the note mean what it says? What else would it mean? I don't know, but it says he was going to kill himself. And if he didn't... Then he should be ashamed of himself. After all, it's a sin to tell a lie. Oh, Sergeant Corbett and Mr. Waring. What is it now? There are a few more questions I want to ask you. I thought that was all finished. I've just been talking to Waring. He opened a new can of peas. Do we come in? Well, I... I... All right, I guess so. Thanks. Now, what is it? It's just that Waring tells me you were going to leave your husband. Oh, no, that's not so. Oh, wait a minute. You told well, me... Well, I was just talking. We, we had had a little spat. It didn't mean anything. You said you were packing. I often threatened to leave. I didn't mean it. Wesley knew it. This, this had happened often before. It had nothing to do with, with his death. You don't think constant fights with you But we do... always made up. Believe me, it didn't mean anything. What was the little spat about? Money. I wanted a new coat. Wesley said he couldn't afford it. He said business had been bad. I didn't see how it could have been that bad, or he'd have said something about it before. Oh, he said his business was bad. Mm hmm. Mrs. Endicott, when I was here before, I asked you if you knew any reason why your husband would want to kill himself. You said you couldn't think of any. I couldn't. Don't you call bad business a possible reason? But I just told you I didn't believe he was telling the truth. Oh, Corbett, there's one way to find out if he was. Let's look into Endicott's business, shall we? Maybe we'll find it's dead, too. Here it is, Corbett, 705. Yeah. Huh. Nobody in here. Mrs. Endicott said Endicott's assistant would be here. Maybe he's in the back office. Yeah, maybe. Hello? Hello? Hmm. Hmm. What's that? Sounds hmm. like somebody moaning. Come on. Hmm. Oh, there he is on the floor. Hey, what happened to you? Hmm. Huh? Oh, uh, it was Mr. Mayo. Mayo? Yeah. He came back and he started going through the files and I tried to stop him, but... Oh, he knocked me out. Looted the office. I'll say he did. Look at the inner office, Waring. Looks like a whirlwind in the paperwork. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, are you Mr. Waring? Yes, you know what Endicott wanted to see me about? Well, uh, didn't he tell you? Yeah, he didn't get around to it. Why, well, I suppose it has something to do with Mr. Mayo. Who's Mayo? Reginald Mayo. He's in building supplies. He was here earlier today, had a fight with Mr. Endicott, and then Mr. Endicott went home, and then a little later, Mr. Mayo came back. Mm -hmm. 
What was the trouble between Endicott and Mayo? Oh, uh, I don't know. Why not ask Mr. Endicott? Well, I'm afraid that wouldn't do much good. So we'll have to try Mayo instead. <laughs> I'm sorry, gentlemen, Mr. Mayo isn't in. He left word he can be reached tomorrow morning at the Hillard Hotel in Boston. Boston? What's he doing in Boston? I'm sure I don't know. When did he leave? About 20 minutes ago. I understand he's taking the 6 o'clock from LaGuardia Airport. You may still yeah, have time. Yeah, if we to... hurry, thanks. Waring, come on. <laughs> Well, this does it, Waring. Mayo's trying to get away, clinches it. It does? Sure. How about the Boston address? Why would he leave that if this is a runout? Well... And the uh, plane he's taking, would he point arrows for us? Well, maybe it's a bluff. Maybe that's not his plane. Well, then what are we hurrying for? Because we can't take chances. <laughs> and stop smirking. Who's smirking? All right, Waring, you don't like the way I do things? You got any bright ideas? No, Corbett, I haven't. He admits it yet. Not a single idea. Not even any wrong ones. Ah. Sergeant, I've got important business They're in Boston. They're holding the plane, and... Mayo. Talk fast and make sense. Maybe I'll let you go. Maybe. I'm What's telling you... What's this important business, anyway? Conference. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. What's with you and Endicott? Why? I'll ask the questions. Well, at least you, you can You want to jump... miss the plane? All right. All right. I did business with Endicott. Got him some materials that are hard to get hold of. Had plenty of bids for it, but took his. Then his check bounces. You wonder why I'm sore? Oh, the check bounced. That's right. So you push him around. I didn't push him around. I just warned him he'd better make good on that check by tomorrow noon or there'd be trouble. Except tomorrow noon you plan to be in Boston. I didn't know that this morning. This Boston business came up sudden. Yeah, didn't it, though? The murder wouldn't have anything to do with it, I suppose. Murder? What murder? Endicott's. What? Hmm. He actually looks surprised, Waring. Maybe he is. Well, I don't know anything about the murder. Why don't you go back? I, I'm not answering anything more without a lawyer. You went back to Endicott's. Why? I didn't. His assistant I'm says... not answering anything without a lawyer. What were you looking for? I'm not You're answering... You're not going to do so good in that Boston conference from a cell in New York. You can't hold me. Just because I had an argument I with Endicott... I can hold you to... for beating up Endicott's assistant. Well, you're crazy. I didn't... He says you did. Look, Sergeant. I've got to get to Boston. I don't know anything about the murder. If you want answers, ask Mrs. Endicott. She can tell you more than I can. What gives you that idea? She was seeing another man. Yeah? Who says so? Endicott. All right, we'll check on that. But now, Mayo, you're going to I have nothing tell... more to say. And you can sit in the cell until you think of something. Look, I gave you a lease. Oh, so thanks. I... Now, get moving. <laughs> Dennis, who can that be? Well, don't ask me. I, I shouldn't have had you come up here, but I was so upset. Well, I... pull yourself together. But if anyone sees you Just here... don't lose your head. I can handle this. Oh, dear. Oh, now, now, what are we going to do? Answer the door. Leave the rest to me. But you and Stop I Stop should... making so much of it. Couldn't I have come to see Wesley? I... I guess so. All right, then. I didn't come up here because of you. I'm a friend of Wesley's. Just remember that. Now answer the door. Yes, dear. And don't call me dear. You two again. How often are you coming back? Until you tell us all you know. I did. That's not the way we heard it. Come in, Waring. Yeah, Corbett. But, well, uh, well, she has company. So I see. Oh, uh, Sergeant Corbett, Mr. Waring, this is Dennis Fulton. He's a friend of, of my husband. I see. Hello, Fulton. How do you do, Sergeant? I uh, dropped in to see Endicott. Gail, uh, or Mrs. Endicott, just told me the awful news. I can't imagine why he did it. Hmm. Do you think it could have been because his wife was seeing another man? What? Sergeant, how dare we you? We have it on good authority. And you admitted threatening to leave him. I explained all that. You say you dropped in to see Endicott, Fulton? That's right, Mr. Waring. And Mrs. Endicott had nothing to do with your visit? What do you mean? Are you trying to suggest that she and I... Now, that's ridiculous. I hardly know Dennis. You call him Dennis. Well, that, that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. How about your lipstick on his face? What? Does that mean anything? Well, I... Looks like you jumped the gun by locking up Mayo, Corbett. His lead is paying off. Yeah. Well, you two, you gonna come clean? I don't know what this is all about. Even if there is something between us, Sergeant, I don't see that it's any of your business. 
I didn't know you keep prying like this when a man kills himself. We don't, when we're sure he did kill himself. What do you mean? Is there any doubt? Yeah, plenty. We don't think your husband killed himself. We think he was murdered. Oh, no. Oh, yes, Dennis. Which makes your concealing your friendship with Mrs. Endicott very interesting, to say the least. Look, you don't understand. I'm willing to. It's just that... Well, the scandal... We, we didn't want people saying we'd driven him to suicide. Well, you don't have to worry about that. But they may say you killed him. But the note. He said he was going to shoot himself. Yes, only somebody beat him to it. Well, it wasn't us. You were here in the apartment. Well, I, I only got in a few minutes before you arrived. He must have been killed while I was out. You mean you hadn't seen him from the time you arrived until I found him? That's right. Still, you told me he was in the study. How did you know it if you hadn't seen him? The door was closed. No, I, I mean, I hadn't seen him to speak to. I opened the door and, and called him, but he didn't answer. I didn't know he was dead. I thought he was just sulking. Don't, don't you believe me? I think you'd better come with me to headquarters, both of you. Oh, no, please. I, uh, Dennis, call a lawyer. Do something. Sergeant, this, this is a terrible shock to me. I, I didn't know, honestly. If Gail killed him, it was without my knowledge. Dennis, what are you saying? She told me it was suicide. That's the first I'd heard you of it. sneak! I dare you! Help the eyes out! Go get her! All right, that's me. enough. Cut it out. I said cut it out! Let me go. Let me get out of here. You I... calm down. I'll stop you here. All right. All right, but he's not crawling out of this. We killed Wesley together. No, Gail. Oh, yes, together. And it was Dennis's idea. He made me help. He called Wesley at the office and asked him to come home early. He waited in the study. She's out of her mind. You want a confession, Sergeant? I'll give you one. No. Robert, get him. He's going for the window. Hey, you wait. This is Jack Costello again, friends. Right now, I'd like to tell you about nine kinds of wonderful eating. That's right. I said nine because I'm talking about the delicious Kraft cheese spreads that come in nine grand varieties. There are delightfully mild-tasting ones like Kraft pineapple cheese spread, Kraft relish, and Kraft olive pimento. And there are sharp-tasting kinds, too, such as Kraft cheese and bacon spread, Roca, and Kraft Limburger. They're all delicious, all wholesome dairy products, and all so handy for making quick, easy snacks and sandwiches. Always keep your refrigerator stocked with several of the nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. A few hours have passed since Dennis Fulton beat a hasty retreat from Gail Endicott's accusations. Gail has signed her confession and is being held. Mayo has been released. There's an alarm out for Fulton. There's nothing much more for Mike to do on the case, or so he thinks. So he's returned home. He's settling down with the pipe and slippers when he goes to the door, opens it, and finds himself looking at Dennis Fulton and a gun. Get back inside, Waring. I am inside. Away from the door, and no quick moves. Oh, all right. That's better. Just keep your hands where I can see them, and we'll get along fine. I don't know that I want to get along. You're not exactly my type. I didn't come for chit-chat, Waring. I have a proposition. Yeah? I didn't kill Endicott. I didn't know anything about it. Gail's lying. So you said. I want you to prove it. All right, give yourself up, and I'll work on it. I'm not giving myself up until it's proved. That's why the gun. I want to hire you to prove that Gail did it alone. Why should I work for you? Well, they say money talks. Here. Here's a mouthful. Five hundred, hmm. I'll double it if you clear me. Well, Waring? Well, I don't like you, Dennis, but I can't say the same for your money, so let's hear your story. You heard it all. There's nothing else. I didn't know anything about the murder until the sergeant told me. You didn't call Endicott and ask him to go home early? No, that's just another of Gail's lies. All right, we'll start with that one. It can probably be checked. How? Endicott's assistant, Shepard, probably takes all calls and announces them to Endicott. Well, I'll check with Shepard and see if he got a call from you. Yes, that's a good idea. Well, I can't get him now. The office will be closed. But I'll look him up in the morning. All right, Waring. In the meantime, if uh, you want to stay here... Oh, no, no thanks, Waring. I don't trust you and you don't trust me, so I'd have to keep my finger on the trigger. Under the circumstances, I don't think it would be comfortable for either of us. 
Yeah, I see what you mean. So I'll call you tomorrow. So long, Waring. Oh, Mr. Waring. Hello, Shepin. What are you doing here? Maybe saving your life. What? Well, let me in. I'll explain. All right, come in. Uh, I don't understand. Shepard, since I saw you this afternoon, you've probably seen in the paper that Endicott was murdered today. Yes, it's awful. Mm -hmm. Well, you may be able to clear one of the suspects or clinch the case against him. I? Yes, I told him you probably have the information. Now, if he's innocent, he won't do anything. If he's guilty, he may come gunning for you. Good heavens, I... Take it easy. He won't be coming yet. I told him I'd check with you in the morning so he doesn't think he needs to hurry. And I came right over. Yes, but if he does come... Now, before you get in this stew, let's see if you really have anything to worry about. Now, tell me. Yeah? Didn't all calls to Endicott go through your desk? Yes. So you'd know about any call he received, huh? That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, did he receive a call today a short time before he went home from a man? No, oh, he didn't receive a call from anybody. Oh, you're sure? Positive. After his fight with Mr. Mayo, he called you, and then he said he was leaving the office. I see. Well, then Fulton is telling the truth. Fulton? Mm-hmm, Dennis Fulton. So you don't have anything to worry about from him after all. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. But you may have to worry about Sergeant Corbett. What? Why? Well, he probably want to lock you up when I tell him you killed Endicott. What are you talking about? About you, Shepard, because you're the murderer. <laughs> Oh, we've wrapped up another one, Corbett. Have we? Shepard admitted the shooting, didn't he? Oh, what? Endicott wrote a suicide note, but he didn't kill himself. Mrs. Endicott said she killed him, but she didn't kill him. Shepard said Mayo attacked him. Now he says Mayo didn't attack him. <laughs> he was lying to throw suspicion on Mayo. What's one more confession worth? Well, I think Shepard's will stand up. Mrs. Endicott only confessed because Fulton started crawling and left her holding the bag. So she wanted to get him, no matter what it cost her. The woman scorned, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as for Endicott, he really intended to kill himself. But Shepard saved him the trouble. If we can believe Shepard. No, it all ties up. He'd drawn out the company's money for his private use. So when Endicott's check bounced, Shepard knew Endicott would get him for embezzlement. Mm hmm. So Shepard follows him home and shoots him, not knowing he's just about to shoot himself. That's it, Corbett. He overheard Endicott phoning me to get information, so as soon as Endicott hung up, Shepard stepped into the room and shot him as Endicott turned, and then beat it without noticing the gun in Endicott's hand. If we can believe Shepard. Still not convinced, Corbett? On this case, no. All right, how about the clue that tipped me to Shepard? What clue, Waring? Shepard overheard Endicott's phone call to me. Now, he said Endicott made it from the office. But when Endicott talked to me, he said, can you come over here, and gave me his home address. That meant he was calling from home, not from the office. Uh-huh. Well, does that convince you, Corbett? If we can believe you. Oh, please, how cynical can you get? You know I cannot tell a lie. Yeah, Waring, I know it. <laughs> but who's going to believe me? Mmm, it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, next time you shop, pick up a pound of this good-tasting, fresh-tasting margarine. In states where the law permits, get yellow parquet, already colored in quarters and ready to serve in its new Flavor Saver aluminum foil wrap. Elsewhere, get the regular package or handy color quick bag. It's the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> The Case of the Practical Choker. The Case of the Practical Choker. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that when some gag men go to work, their clients can choke to death. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting Adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. 
The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Jerome Epstein, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Be sure to hear The Great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with an hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place. The Great Gildersleeve, next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your newspaper for a time of broadcast. This is Jack Costello speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Fred Allen, Edwin, and B. Lilly join the big show today on NBC. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Marsha. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to calm me out tonight, Angel. I'm going to be entertained by some comic. And when this boy makes with the gags, he really slays them. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novel. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Practical Choker. Before we join the Falcon for his latest adventure, I'd like to tell you about nine of the handiest little menu helpers you ever had in your kitchen. They're the nine famous Kraft cheese spreads, and they really are handy for making snacks and sandwiches, salad toppings and appetizers. All of the Kraft cheese spreads, the mild-tasting ones, and the sharp-tasting ones, too, are delicious. And they're all the very finest quality because they're made by Kraft. So, tomorrow, get several of the nine famous cheese spreads made by Kraft. And now, the case of the practical choker. Sunday afternoon in New York, and in a parked car outside the Club 91, a bad actor named Chuck Morgan and a blonde named Linda Stewart are rehearsing a new comedy routine. And although Mr. Morgan's ideas of humor may be overdeveloped, still he obviously believes this act should kill his customer. Now, you understand what you're supposed to do, Linda. I'm not too sure, Mr. Morgan. What's the matter with you, anyway? Your agent told me you were a hep dame. Look, Mr. Morgan, I don't need a job that badly. All right, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean that. You see, I want to play a joke on this guy, and I want to make sure that it goes off of schedule. Well, the more I hear this joke, the less I like it. I told you, there's nothing to worry about. This fellow's a good friend of mine. Then why do something as silly as this? Just to settle a bet. Now, he thinks he's a great little guy with the ladies, and I bet him 50 bucks he was wrong. But you promised me $100 for this job. How can you come out ahead? You don't understand, Linda. It's not the money, it's the principle of this thing. I just want to make a sucker out of Davis. David? Yeah, his name is Red Davis. Now, he's a thin little guy with red hair and pop eyes. You won't have any trouble spotting him. He owns the joint. He'll be in the corner booth. But suppose your friend doesn't show any interest in me. You haven't taken a good look at yourself in the mirror lately, have you? No, no, I'm not at all worried. Now, when Red sees you, he'll start baying at the moon. But at the beginning, you want me to act insulted. That's right. That's so he won't become suspicious. Then, thaw out and let him buy you a couple of drinks. And after that? Well, he'll probably want to take you out for the evening, so uh, you tell him that first you have to make a stop at your apartment. I don't think I like that, Mr. Morgan. What's there not to like? This is on the up and up. When you get to your place, I'll be waiting for you. And that's where you're going to tell Mr. Davis it's just a joke. That's right. I can hardly wait to see Red when he learns it's a gag. I'll bet he'll practically die laughing. Hey, hey, where do you live, anyway, Linda? It's just the next floor, Mr. Davis. Oh, cut it out. You promised you were going to call me Red. I'm sorry. Red, do you know a man named... 
Man named who? Forget it. You know, I don't get you, Linda. When I first saw you in the club, I immediately said to myself, now there's a dame with class. I was surprised when you gave me a tumble. Mott, I don't often do things like that. It was an impulse, huh? Yeah. I understand. I get them all the time. <sighs> Where do we go now? Is this apartment here? Oh, here. Let me help you. It's all right. I can manage. Come in. Thanks. Hey, hey, nice layout you got here, Linda. I think I'm going to like this. I wouldn't bet on that, Red Morgan. Oh, then you do know each other. Hey, you dirty little double cross. But he told me it was a joke. The joke's over now, honey. You can beat it. Now, see here, Mr. Morgan. I said beat it. Oh, I don't know. If expect... you're a smart girl, you'll keep your trap closed. Now, go on. Listen, Morgan. Shut up. I don't want any conversation from you, Red. I just want my dough. What dough? Don't play dumb. The 60 grand you owe me on the Robinson fight. Oh, that. What would you think I was talking about? Well, you see, I'm kind of low, Chuck. I've been running in tough luck lately. From and... now on, it's going to get worse. You know, all the boys are laughing at me for letting you hang me up. A man in my position can't afford that. It might give other people ideas. Look, Morgan, suppose I pay you a little at a time, huh? What do you call a little? Well, I could give you 10 grand now and the balance... Keep make... your hands up. I was just reaching for my wallet. You got that dough on you? Yeah. Okay, let's have it. Oh, sure. I was going to give it to you all the time. What? All right, Morgan. Put him up. Put away that gun, Davis. At your age. Well, Mr. Morgan, who's the joke on now? I guess it's me. <laughs> and you're not kidding. That's okay, Red. I'll see you again. And I'll lay your odds. Next time, you won't be this lucky. I get this, Mr. Lyons, because you'll enjoy it. After Chuck Morgan goes to all that trouble, Red pulls the gun and leaves Chuck with his tongue hanging out. Well, that's very amusing, Hudson. What happened after that? Oh, Morgan started looking for him again. And what do you think will happen if he finds him this time? The same thing. You don't believe Morgan will kill him? No, Morgan's all talk. You think so? I huh? know so. I wouldn't last this long as a private dick if I wasn't a good judge of character, huh? Now, take it from me, nothing's going to happen to Red. Well, that's too bad, Hudson. It would be worth a lot of money to me if something did. Huh? How much is a lot of money? Well, what's the difference? You're not interested. Try me. $2,500. You're right. At that price, I'm not interested. Well, it isn't worth more. Everybody knows that Morgan has threatened Davis. So you run absolutely no risk. What have you got against Red anyway? Well, that's none of your business. Either you want the job or you don't. Well, as long as you put it in that basis, Mr. Lyons... Let me think it over. Club ninety one, good evening. Hello, Victor. This is Red. Oh, yes, Mr. Davis. I'm in a booth at the corner of Madison and 46. Anybody been around the joint asking for me? Uh, several gentlemen. Uh, what'd you tell them? That I had not heard from you all day. Good. Norma there? Who? My wife, stupid. No, 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 no. Mrs. Davis has not been in all evening. Well, when she gets there... Uh, cut that out. What's the trouble? Uh, some characters in a hurry to use the phone. Hold it a second, Victor, till I take care of this pest. Now, listen, you. How would you like a good... Oh, punch. Punch. That's you, Waring? What the... Shut the door. Listen, Morgan. Got it. Just keep your hands right where they are. What are you doing here, Chuck? Red Davis was knocked off a couple of hours ago. That still doesn't answer my question. I don't see why not. 
One, the cops think I did it. Two, you can prove I didn't. Now, does it add up? Not to my liking. You better get somebody else. Listen, Waring, maybe I haven't handled this right, but I didn't kill Red. And why don't you tell that to the police? You don't think for a minute they believe me. Suppose I told you I don't either. Now, look, Mike, I know you don't like me, but give me credit for a little intelligence. If I was going to knock off Davis, would I shoot my mouth off all over town? So? So I tell you I didn't kill him. Then who did? I got no idea. Okay, Morgan. I'll see what I can do for you. But first, I want you to surrender to the cops. Oh, no. All right, then it's no deal. Now, wait a minute, Mike. I'll make you a proposition. No, I'm not interested. For Pete's sake, give me a chance, will you? I'm convinced that with any luck, you can clean this up in a couple of hours. If you haven't, by then, I'll give myself up. What'll you do in the meantime? I'll stay right here. What's to prevent me from walking out and calling the police? Nothing. Oh, you just trust me, huh? I don't have any other choice. What do you say, Mike? Well, this is against my better judgment, Morgan. But you got yourself a boy. <laughs> This is Ed Hurley here again, friends. This time of year, especially, everybody longs for something just a little bit different to pep up tired winter menus. So this idea for a tempting salad may be just what you want. It's an easy salad to make. You just take a good-sized green pepper, scoop out the center, and stuff the pepper with Kraft's delicious olive pimento cheese spread. Then chill, slice into pinwheels, and serve each slice on a crispy lettuce leaf. Mmm, mmm. Oh, what wonderful eating. Kraft Olive Pimento is an extra delicious cheese spread filled with juicy bits of red pimentos and fine green olives. And like all nine of the good-eating Kraft cheese spreads, it's a wholesome dairy food made from only the finest, purest ingredients. And smooth, it's smooth as satin. Spreads perfectly for sandwiches and snacks. Try smoke hell and Kraft cheese and bacon spread and all of the nine Kraft cheese spreads. Look for them in gay, colorful, tulip-designed drinking glasses. Collect a whole set while you're enjoying these delicious spreads. You know, Kraft cheese spreads are so delicious, they're America's favorite. So be sure you get the cheese spreads made by Kraft. <laughs> now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Mike Waring agreed to go to work for Chuck Morgan. And now as we find Mike, he's about to earn his fee. Yes? Mrs. Norma Davis? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. I'm sorry to bother you at a time like this, but I'd like to ask you some questions about your husband. But I've told the police everything I know. Well, I'm working on a different angle. Come in. Thank you. What do you want to know? Uh, Mrs. Davis, have you any ideas who might have killed Ren? Yes. Chuck Morgan. I mean, besides Morgan. No. Red didn't have an enemy in the world. <laughs> now, you know that's not true, Mrs. Davis. Your husband wasn't exactly the most popular citizen in New York. How dare you say that to me? Well, I only... Met... I won't have you talk that way about him. I'm tired of these insinuations. How do you know what kind of man Paul was? Well, I'm sorry. You're I... sorry. Go on, get out. Mrs. Davis, look, all I... I don't want to hear any more about it. Now, leave me alone. Permit me to congratulate you, Mrs. Davis. That was a marvelous performance. Why, thank you, Mr. Lyon. <laughs> you think I convinced him I was a broken-hearted widow? How could you help it when you practically convinced me? <laughs> Come here, darling, and let me console you. Just a second. Yeah, I'm looking for a guy named Larry Hudson. Well, look no further, Mr. Morgan. You, Hudson? That's right. One of my friends told me he wanted to see me. He told you right. Care for a drink? Yeah, I could stand one. Help yourself. Bar's in the corner. Pour me one while you're at it. You're in a bad spot, Chuck. You bring me up here to tell me that? Yeah. Yeah, you see, I know who killed Red Davis. What? You heard me. Oh, that one, mine? Yeah. Thanks. Say, yeah. Uh, how you fix the cash? What do you mean? Well, I got a lot of information to sell. It's going to the highest bidder. You mean you can clear me? 
I'm not doing any more talking until I see the color of your dough. How do I know you got merchandise? I'll give you a sample. Did you know that Davis's wife was too timing him? With whom? Oh, no, that's all you get free. But you can use this kind of stuff, can't you? Listen, Hudson, I want you to talk to Waring. Oh? Mike Waring, the Falcon, he's working for me. Are you kidding? No. Will you talk to him? Sure. Providing I can make a buck. I'll take care of you. I'm going back to Waring's apartment. I want you to call him there in about 15 minutes. Well, I'll be sitting right here at the phone. Tell him what you told me about Mrs. Davis. Oh, no. No good. Get the dough up first. Now, look, Hudson, I only got a grand on me. I'll give you another four the next time I see you. Ah. Okay, Morgan. You got yourself a deal. Morgan? Chuck? Um. Hello, desk. This is Mr. Waring. Uh, there was a man waiting in my apartment. By any chance that you... Never mind. Come in. Hello, Mike. I'm just asking for you, Morgan. Where the devil have you been? Out. That tells me a lot. I thought you agreed to stay right here. I know, but I had to see somebody. Who? Suppose you tell me what you found out first. Well, not very much. Every lead I explored came back to you. Did you see Mrs. Davis? Just for a few minutes. What'd you think of her? Uh, she seemed all broken up over her husband's murder. She was kidding you. What makes you think so? Because I've been doing a little checking on my own. She's been holding hands with some guy who welcomed her husband. Where'd you get that from? Private dick named Larry Hudson? Oh, that lion thief. I don't care what he is, Mike. He's got the evidence to clear me. Who did he say killed Davis? He wouldn't tell me, but I made him promise to talk to you. He should be calling you any minute. Listen, Morgan, I wouldn't trust that guy in a stack of Bibles. What'd you give him? Give him? Yes, a guy like Hudson doesn't talk for free. How much you promise him? Five grand. Then you better save your money. But I tell you, he can clear me. Hey, that's probably him now. Hello. That's you, Waring? That's right, Hudson. I take it, then, you've talked to Morgan. Yeah. Well, what do you think? What I think is unimportant. Morgan tells me you can clear him. Sure. For a price. Now, for my part, I'm not interested. You've got to talk to him, Mike. I don't like it, Morgan. Neither do I, but if this guy can save my Well, neck... make up your minds, boys. They ain't got all week. Okay, Hudson. We'll be over in an hour. <laughs> Over here, Mike. Now, look, I want you to let me handle Hudson and keep your mouth shut. You're the doctor. What's keeping him? I don't know. Maybe one out. I doubt it. How can you tell? Take a peek at that keyhole. I can't see a thing. Sure, because the key is still in the lock. That means Hudson's got to be in there. Hey, Hudson, open up! Hudson! All right, Morgan, give me a hand. What are you going to do? Break it down. Shouldn't take too much effort. Come on, let's go. All right, one more. Should do it. Hudson. Hudson. Where the devil is the light switch? It ought to be somewhere around the door. And watch yourself, Morgan. Wait till I strike a match. Uh, I got it. There we are. Mike. Yeah. Don't touch him. Was he dead? Either that or asleep. With that knife in him, what do you think? Hand me the phone. I got to call the cops. Well, this is a nice piece of work, Mike. A very nice piece of work. All right, Morgan, let's go. Now, uh, hold it, Corbett. He's not the reason I called you. I know, but I'm not complaining. I told you not to call him, Mike. Yeah, I'm beginning to think you're right, Morgan. For the same dime, I could have phoned someone with brains. What kind of a crack is that? Well, in case you hadn't noticed, Sergeant, that's a body in that chair. It'll keep. But as long as you raise the point, why did you kill him, Morgan? You crazy? I just got here with Waring. Don't hand me that. It's the truth, Corbett. So you're going to be his alibi. Yep. And you better listen to me unless you want to look like a jerk when we get to headquarters. Now, how long would you say Hudson was dead? Yeah, not too long. Body's still warm. Would be anywhere from 15 minutes to three quarters of an hour. And that lets Morgan out. I don't see how. Because he was with me every minute from the time I got Hudson's call to the time we broke down the door. And the whole business took at least an hour. Your word's not good enough, Mike. Okay, Sergeant. If you don't believe me, you can check with the switchboard at my place and the doorman downstairs. And if that's not enough, 
I'll dig up the hacky who drove us over. That still doesn't mean Morgan couldn't have killed Red Davis. Oh, no, come on. Use your head, Sergeant. You know both these murders were committed by the same party. Hudson knew who it was, and that's why he was killed. I still say it was Morgan. You're crazy. Hudson was going to clear me. Keep quiet, Morgan. All right, Sergeant. I'll advise him to confess if you can show me one thing. What? How did he get in here? You can see the only door was locked from the inside. So what? He could have used the window. Yeah. We'll take a look. Mm, there are bars on him. That's right. And no one but a midget could sit through the opening. And there must be another door. Yeah, forget it, there wasn't. And it was a physical impossibility for anyone to have killed Hudson. Yet it was done. How? Well, I can't tell you. But maybe I can take you to the little lady who can. Shall we go? <laughs> Listen, Mike, if the D.A. ever finds out I let Morgan go, he'll have... Wait a minute. Huh? Isn't this where Red Davis lived? That's right, Sergeant. Well, you can't bother his wife now. Why not? Because her husband was just murdered. Oh, well, she may surprise you with what she knows about it. Morgan told me that she was being romanced by some character. Oh, I don't know. And apparently neither did Red. If you ask me, Sergeant, I... Yes? Hello, Mrs. Davis. Remember me? Not too pleasantly. <laughs> May we come in? I'm sorry, Mr. Waring. I'm busy. Oh, well, this gentleman would like to ask you a couple of questions. This gentleman means nothing in my young life. Well, now you never can tell. He's a sergeant in the New York Police Department's Homicide Division. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, well, it's just that the house is, is in such a mess. Well, we promise not to stare. Who was it, Norma? Norma. I think you're being paged, Angel. It's, it's nothing, Raymond. Oh, for a moment, darling, I was... Oh. Hello, Mr. Um... Lyons, Raymond Lyons. Listen, Sergeant, I, I can explain everything. Sure, but suppose we do it downtown. Downtown? As is customary, Mrs. Davis, when the police are questioning suspects. But we did absolutely nothing. Yeah, nothing but murder your husband and the man named Larry Hudson. That's a lie. Do you deny that you and Lyons are busy in the romance department behind your husband's back? Yes. And what's Lyons doing here now? Well, he, he's just helping me. Mm-hmm. Like he helped you murder Hudson? No. Now, just a moment, Waring. I thought this gentleman was the officer of the law. You're right, Lyons, but if you think my questions are going to be less embarrassing, you're in for a bad shock. Larry Hudson was murdered at 10.45 tonight. Where were you at that time? I was with Norma. That's right. Well, now, that's what I call a wonderful alibi, Sergeant. Too bad there wasn't anyone else around to substantiate it. Oh, but there was, Mr. Waring. A justice of the peace uh, named Smith over in Jersey. I think he might recall us. Why should he? Because I gave him $100 to perform the marriage ceremony that made Norma here Mrs. Lyons. I guess he should remember that, don't you? This is Ed Hurley here again, friends, and I'd like to help you find out about the nine most delicious cheese spreads you'd ever want to taste. They're the nine famous cheese spreads made by Kraft. They're delightfully mild-tasting ones, such as Kraft Pineapple Cheese Spread, Kraft Olive Pimento, and Kraft Relish. And there are sharp-tasting ones, too, like Roca, Smokel, and Kraft Limburger Cheese Spread. All of them are mighty good to eat. And they're good for you to eat, too, because they're wholesome dairy foods made from only the finest ingredients. For quick, easy snacks and sandwiches, keep your refrigerator stocked with several of the nine delicious Kraft cheese spreads. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. A half hour has passed since Norma Davis and Raymond Lyons punctured Mike's theory by coming up with an unbreakable alibi. And now as Mike drives home with Sergeant Corbett, he still refuses to accept the obvious. Doesn't make sense, Corbett. I tell you, it doesn't make sense. Hey, will you watch where you're driving? Something screwy about that marriage. You saw the license? Well, doesn't it strike you as strange that within 12 hours after her husband is murdered, Mrs. Davis marries another man? Of course it does. There's no law against it. No, but an alibi like that must have a hole in it. Yeah, you show me where. And after you do that, show me how either Mrs. Davis or Lyons could have murdered Hudson. If it was a physical impossibility for Morgan to kill him, it applies to them, too. Oh, hold everything. What's the matter? 
Oh, what a chump I've been. Well, they say confession is good for the soul. I tell you, I've got the answer to the whole thing, Sergeant. That on the level? Yes. I know now who killed Hudson. And with the help of Chuck Morgan, I'm going to prove it. I don't see what you're driving at, Mike. I don't know anything about Mrs. Davis except what I told you before. Well, how did you discover she was seeing Raymond Lyons? I didn't know it was Lyons. All Hudson told me was that it was some man. Mm -hmm. How well did you know Hudson? I met him for the first time today. He got in touch with one of my friends and said he wanted to see me. Well, that puts us right back where we started. Look, Mike, why don't we drop the whole business? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, sure. The cops know now that I couldn't have killed Hudson. That's where you're wrong. You mean they still No, they don't. But I do. What are you babbling about? Morgan, I know how you managed it. Do you? Yes, and it's pretty clever. I can't blame myself for not seeing it sooner. No wonder you insisted I go up and see Hudson. I'm still waiting to hear you explain how I killed him. Well, I'm saving that for the cops. Ah, don't kid yourself, Mike. You've done all the talking you're going to. All right, put away the gun, Morgan. You don't think I'd be sucker enough to come here alone? Funny, I don't see anyone around. You're not looking in the right places. What? Get down, Mike. I'm warning you, Morgan. You better throw your gun in the middle of the room. You want it, Sergeant? Come here. Watch it, Mike. He may be acting. Yeah, with that hole in his forehead, call, but it doesn't call for much ability. I think you better phone the coroner. You can drop me off at the corner, Sergeant. Well, it's been great. Hold it, Mike. Aren't hmm? you forgetting something? I've got a report to make. Who's stopping you? You are. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know that Morgan killed Red Davis. Sure. I was the first one to say so. You should have stuck to your guns. Well, when you tossed in that razzle-dazzle about Hudson's murder, you threw me. Yeah, well, don't feel too badly about it. I was right with you. Of course, I'm reconstructing now, but this is what must have happened. Lyons tried to hire Hudson to bump Red. Hudson said he'd think it over. When Red was killed, Hudson knew immediately that if he hadn't done it, Morgan must have. I don't see how that follows. It could have been Lyons. Uh-uh. If Lyons were willing to do the job, why did he approach Hudson in the first place? Now, it had to be Morgan. And when Hudson realized that, he tried to shake down Morgan. He even told Morgan that if the price were right, he might be induced to frame Red's wife. So Morgan played along with him and asked him to get in touch with me. Mm, now we're coming to the part I want to hear. But when Chuck went to meet Hudson, first of many such... So he slipped a slow-acting drug into Hudson's drink. Why didn't he kill him then and there and be done with it? Because he needed an alibi, and I was it. I don't get it. He needed someone with him while he murdered Hudson. What? Sure. Remember you said it was a physical impossibility for anyone to get into that room and kill Hudson before Morgan and I broke down the door? Yeah. Well, there you hit the nail right on the head. It was a physical impossibility. So it means that Hudson was killed while I was in the room. Let me get this straight. You mean while you were hunting for the light switch? Morgan was hunting for a place to plant his knife. Wasn't he taking quite a chance there? Oh. Hudson was drugged, so he couldn't make an outcry. And the knife makes no noise at all. Hmm. Well, that'll learn you. The next time I say something, you'll listen. I told you Morgan was the killer all along. Yeah, well, you'll have to forgive me. I've been hearing so many radio shows. I forgot it wasn't unconstitutional for a cop to be right. Let's hope this establishes some sort of a precedent. Huh? Good night, Sergeant. It's wonderful as a spread, delicious as a seasoning, superb as a flavor shortening. It's parquet margarine, that marvelous all-purpose margarine made by Kraft. Yes, millions prefer parquet to any other spread, seasoning or shortening, for one big reason. It tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. In states where the law permits, get yellow parquet in its new aluminum foil flavor saver wrap. Elsewhere, get the regular package or color quick bag. Get P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. It tastes so good. The Case of the Gangster's Girl. The 
Case of the Gangster's Girl. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that somebody who starts out to be a stool pigeon is likely to end up being a dead pigeon. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Gene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Ken Lynch as Sergeant Corbett. Also heard on today's broadcast was Miss Ann Williams of New Orleans, Louisiana, who was chosen by this program from among the dramatic students of Sarah Lawrence College in Bronxville, New York. Be sure to hear the great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. In next Wednesday's broadcast, Gildy comes face to face with an hilarious problem and solves it in a way that will keep you laughing for days. Remember the show, the time, and the place. The great Gildersleeve next Wednesday evening over most of these stations. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast. This is Ed Hurley speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. Monty Woolley, Jack Haley, and Judy Holliday join the big show on NBC.